Hello, kindergarten. Welcome back to another fun week of entomology, our final week of learning about insects and bugs. I hope as you have been becoming an EIT, an entomologist in training, you've been learning how important bugs and insects are to our ecosystem. And hopefully this summer, as you see insects crawling around while you're playing outside, hopefully you look at them a little bit different now. Hopefully when you see an ant crawling along the sidewalk, you think, oh, I better not step on that ant. He's probably out collecting food for his babies. Or maybe if you see a bee buzzing around, you don't scream. You think, that bee is helping pollinate those flowers or is collecting nectar, maybe to go back and help make honey. So this summer, think about everything we've learned about how important these insects are. And that's what we're going to focus in on this week, is how bugs and plants live together and why they are so important for our ecosystem. So I found this nonfiction book that's going to teach us all sorts of facts about how bugs and plants live together. How bugs and plants live together. Well, and here's that table of contents that we see in nonfiction books. Remember, each page tells you what you're gonna learn on that page. And here's that heading, different relationships. Have you ever seen a bee flying around a flower or a ladybug crawling on a leaf? Bugs and plants have very special relationships or connections between them. Certain bugs and plants enjoy the same kinds of weather and live well together. When plants and bugs use each other to stay alive, both sides benefit or gain something. There are special relationships even in your backyard. And here's a little caption down here. It says, the next time you see a plant, look closely to see what kind of critters are near it. And here's a beautiful butterfly. What's pollination? Another heading. Good relationships are about giving and taking, which happens during pollination. That's when a bug, such as a bee or a butterfly, carries pollen from one flower to another. Pollen allows flowers to make new seeds. Pollination is a good example of giving and taking. The bee gives pollen to plants to take food from them, and then the plants give food to the bees and take pollen from them. And that's what they use to make honey. The yellow powder on the bee's legs is pollen, and that's how he spreads it. And then when he goes and lands on another flower, he helps it to pollinate. Let's follow a bee during pollination. First, the bee finds a flower. There is tasty nectar, a sweet juice in the flowers. Next, the bee crawls inside and takes the nectar to feed the other bees in its hive. As the bees take the nectar, it also gets pollen on its legs. The bee carries the pollen to the next flower, and it doesn't even do this on purpose. So here it says bees have very important jobs to do. So it shows you their job in this picture. So it says a bee flies to the first flower to take the nectar and the pollen. Then he flies to the second flower and it takes nectar and leaves the pollen. And then the bee flies home to its hive to make nectar into honey for food. So bees are very important. But there are some bad bugs. When bugs have a parasitic relationship with plants, they're called pests. And many pests love to eat plants. 
Pests include aphids and grasshoppers. Some moths and caterpillars are pests too. Aphids are tiny bugs that use their long pointed mouth parts to break into plants and drink their juices. They attack the soft parts of a plant such as the leaves and they can also spread sicknesses that kill the plants. And down here in the caption, it says there are many different kinds of aphids and they're present on most plants. And if you look closely here, you can see all of them on the bottom of the leaf. And they're actually eating the leaf. And as we've learned, leaves are a very important part to the plant. They help catch that sunlight. So they're actually, these bugs are pests but you're gonna find out in a minute that other bugs eat the aphids. What bugs do you think eat the aphids? Keeping safe. Many bugs help protect plants from pests. Some of these good bugs are, did you guess what they are? Ladybugs. And then there's other bugs called lacewings and hoverflies. Ladybugs are great for controlling pests. They lay their eggs on leaves, and after their larvae break out of their eggs, they eat a lot of aphids. Grown-up ladybugs like to eat aphids too, but they don't eat as many as the larvae do. Because the larvae are hungry when they come out of that egg. So ladybug larvae can eat 40 aphids in an hour and still be hungry. And there is a ladybug larva eating an aphid. That's a really cool picture, isn't it? So ladybugs are another important insect. Lacewings, which I had never heard of them until I read this book, are little bugs that are green or brown and have big wings. They lay small white eggs on the ends of white threads and their larvae look like tiny alligators. Oh, they kind of do. And they love to eat aphids also. Lacewings are sometimes called aphid lions. Farmers and gardeners can buy lacewing larvae to keep pests under control in their gardens. This is better than using unnatural sprays that are harmful with full of chemicals to keep pests away. So a healthier, safer way to keep pests away is to buy lacewing larvae. That's an awesome idea. They are nature's way of keeping pest problems under control. Have you ever seen tiny bees that hover over plants and then quickly fly away? They might not be bees at all. They're hoverflies. Hoverflies are flies that look like tiny bees. They're friendly to people and good for plants. Hoverfly magnets or larvae without legs feed on many leaf pests. Their maggots come in many different colors such as green, yellow, orange, and white. So they look like tiny bees and they're actually flies. Don't worry. They don't sting. So another helpful bug or insect is the hoverfly. Plants protect bugs too. As we've seen, plants are great places to lay eggs. The undersides of leaves are protected from bad weather such as wind and rain and they keep eggs safe. Adult bugs live and hide in plants and at night some butterflies hold on to the underside of a leaf to sleep. I often wondered where bugs sleep. So now it tells us they sleep under leaves at night. Many bugs live inside plants such as trees. Some ants and bees make homes high up in trees to stay safe from enemies. So leaves are good places for bugs to stay when it's raining. Ants. Many carpenter ants make homes and logs. It's easy for them to chew away the wood and make tunnels to live in. In nature, this is a very important relationship. 
logs are dead trees. So they're plants that don't or aren't alive anymore. By chewing them or by chewing through them, ants help the trees to decompose or break down. <clears throat> the nutrients from decomposed plants become part of the soil. So living plants use the nutrients to grow. So helping plants decompose is a very important job in nature. And who helps do that? Ants. So that's another important job ants have. They help break down dead plants. In your garden, bugs are more than just creepy crawly critters. They serve important purposes in nature. If you have a garden, look around to see how the plants and bugs are living together. Do your plants have yellowing leaves or black spots on them? If so, you may have pests. Do your plants have healthy green leaves and pretty flowers? If so, then your plants and bugs are working together as a team. And here's that glossary, which we also find in most nonfiction books that tell us what those hard words mean. All right, so now, like always, when we read, after we read, you always should ask yourself, what did you learn? So today, and over the summer, I am gonna introduce you to these, and some of you might have already heard about them. Over the summer, when you're reading, it's going to be very important that you ask yourself questions after you read. And these five W words, one, two, three, four, five, help you to comprehend or make sure that you understand what you're reading. So this would be a great thing to do over the summer after you read, is ask yourself these five W questions. What, what was my book mostly about? And maybe you, some of you probably already did this during Erla. I know my kids during Erla at school would always do this. What was my book mostly about? If it was nonfiction, like the one we just read, tell your, or ask yourself, what are three facts that I learned? The next W, who? Who was my book mostly about? Where? Where did my book happen? When? When did it happen? And then why? Why did the author write this book? What was the author trying to teach us? So those are very important W questions that you can ask yourself every time you read a book. And it can be a fiction book or a nonfiction book. It works for both. And most of the time, we also do a graphic organizer. And that helps us to answer that what question. What did we learn? All right, so today, in the middle of my graphic organizer, I put... Why do we need insects? Because that's what we're gonna focus on this week. Why are insects so important to our ecosystem? So look at all the reasons why. Bees help pollinate flowers. Bees make honey. So the next time you see a bee, you'll know why they are an important part of our ecosystem. And today we learned why ladybugs are so important. Ladybugs and lacewings and hoverflies eat the bad bugs that eat plants. Ants help decompose or break down dead plants or trees. So those ants are also very important. Butterflies help pollinate flowers. They're important. Hoverflies and dragonflies keep plants healthy. They also eat those pesty insects. Ants and grasshoppers dig in dirt and that helps the plants when they dig those tunnels they loosen the soil and help plants to grow. And then this didn't mention this in the book but I know last week we learned why spiders are so important because spiders eat other insects so we don't have so many bugs around so they help control our bug population so we don't have so many. So are insects very important? 
Yes, so this summer when you see them, you think about why they are so important. What are they doing to help our ecosystem? So today, attached to this lesson, I'm gonna encourage you to do this on your own, but we're also going to do it right now together. So make sure that you get the right answers so it's what, what we just learned about. Why do we need insects? And there's three boxes on your paper. So you can print this off or you could just write them down and then draw the insects underneath. There's three things that insects do to help our ecosystem. They keep plants healthy, they make dirt better, and they pollinate flowers. So below each of those three important things, we're gonna put some insects that help us do that. So let's think about it. A dragonfly. What would a dragonfly help do in our ecosystem? Would they keep plants healthy? I think so. They're going to eat those pesty insects. All right, next one, butterfly. Oh, that one's an easy one. What do butterflies help do? Yeah, they help pollinate. All right, next one, grasshopper. What did we just learn grasshoppers do? Yeah, they dig in the dirt and help loosen that soil and make dirt better. All right, here's that important ladybug. What do ladybugs help us with? Yeah, they keep our plants healthy by eating all those aphids. All right, how about a bee? Very important insect. He's gonna help pollinate those flowers just like the butterfly. And then the ant, next time you see one crawling on the sidewalk, he's probably out collecting food or digging a tunnel and making our dirt better or helping decompose or break down those dead plants. So there are our, some of our very important helpful insects. So I encourage you to complete this at home, take a picture, send it to your teacher, show her how important those insects are, and we'll keep learning about it this week.